Our objective in this lesson is to draw conclusion about the population mean based on the test statistic value and the rejection region. Let's have a quick activity. To reject or not to reject. Refer to the following graphs and decide whether to reject or not to reject the null hypothesis based on the computed values in the box. Let me just recall that the shaded region is what we call the region of rejection. And the unshaded region is the acceptance region or non-rejection region. Let's have the first one. This is an example of right-tailed test and the critical value is 1.28. Computed value is 1.543 and it is greater than 1.28, meaning it is on the right of 1.28 and it lies on the rejection region. So our decision is to reject. Another one, negative 0 0.511. Negative 0 0.511 is less than 1.28 that is on the left of the critical value. This lies on the non-rejection region, so our decision is do not reject. Figure 2 is an example of two-tailed test. Our critical values are negative and positive 2.365. First one, 0 0.875. It lies just before 1. It is on the non-rejection region, so our decision is do not reject. Another one, negative 1.111. Negative 1.111 is on the right of negative 2.365 and lies also on non-rejection region. So our decision is do not reject. Last figure is an example of left-tailed test. The critical value is negative 1.44. First computed value, negative 1.567. Negative 1.567 is less than negative 1.44 and lies here in the rejection region. So our decision is reject. Last one, negative 2.072. Negative 2.072 is also less than negative 1.44 and it lies to the left of the critical value. And since it lies within the rejection region, our decision is to reject. Here is the general rule in rejecting the null hypothesis. In general, if the absolute value of the computed value is greater than the absolute value of the critical value, reject the null hypothesis. Otherwise, fail to reject the null hypothesis. For a right-tailed test like this one, if the computed value is greater than the critical value, this is the critical value, and if the computed value is greater than the critical value, it will lie on the rejection region. So we have to reject the null hypothesis and support the alternative hypothesis. While if the computed value is less than the critical value, so it means it is on the left of the critical value, we do not reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. And the alternative hypothesis is not supported. For a left-tailed test like this one, if the computed value is less than the critical value, this is the critical value, and if the computed value is less than, meaning it is on the left of the critical value, it lies within the rejection region. So we reject the null hypothesis and support the alternative hypothesis. And if the computed value is greater than the critical value, meaning it is on the right of the critical value, we do not reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis because it is on the non-rejection region. And the alternative hypothesis is not supported. Let's have an activity. What's your decision? Decide whether to reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis in the following conditions. Notice that what I have here is computed Z value. Therefore, we're going to need the Z critical values and let us recall our table for that. Number one is one-tailed test with 10% level of significance. 10% one-tailed, it is not specified if left-tailed or right-tailed, so we're going to apply the general rule. 
The computed Z value is 0 0.978. The absolute value of this is, is still 0 0.978. And it is less than the absolute value of negative 1.28 or 1.28. Since it is less than, the decision will be fail to reject the null hypothesis. Number two, two-tailed test, 5% level of significance. Our critical values are positive and negative 1.96. The computed Z value is 1.547. General rule, the absolute value of this is less than 1.96. Therefore, fail to reject the null hypothesis. Number three, right-tailed test with 1% level of significance. Right-tailed 1%. So the critical value is 2.33. In a right-tailed test, if the computed value is greater than the critical value, then we reject the null hypothesis. Let us continue. This time, I have computed T value. So, we're going to need our T critical values from our T table. This is just a portion of the T table just to demonstrate how are you going to decide whether to reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. Number four, one tail test, 10% level of significance. One tail, 10%, so this column. 11 samples, 11 minus 1 is 10, that would be our degrees of freedom. The critical value is 1.372. Computed T value is 1.643. General rule, 1.643 is greater than 1.372. Therefore, our decision is reject the null hypothesis. Number five, two-tailed test, 5% level of significance. Two-tailed, 5%. Eight samples, 8 minus 1 is 7. That would be our degrees of freedom. The critical value is 2.365. The computed T value is 1.547. This is less than 2.365. Therefore, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Number six, right tail test, 1% level of significance. Right tail, so meaning that is one tail at 1% level of significance. Five samples, five minus one is four. That would be our degrees of freedom. The critical value is 3.747. In a right-tailed test, if the computed value is less than the critical value, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Let us try this. In my previous lesson, I have already demonstrated how to decide whether to use Z-test or T-test and how to compute the value. Now, we are going to sketch the graph and make a decision. I am just going to add additional information, a very important one, to my given here. And that is the level of significance. Let us say alpha is equal to 0.05. Since this is Z-test, we're going to recall our Z-critical values. This is not equal to, so this is a two-tailed test. Our level of significance is 0.05, two-tailed 0.05, so the critical values are positive and negative 1.96. Let us sketch our graph. Let us locate positive 1.96. That would be here just right before 2. Let us label it. Let us also locate negative 1.96. That would be right before negative 2. Let us label it. We know that the tails of the curve is what we call the rejection region, while at the middle of it is the non-rejection region. Now, let us locate 3.795. 3.795 is somewhere to the right of 3. Let us say here, and that lies within the rejection region. So our decision would be, since the computed Z value of 3.795 lies within the rejection region, hence we reject the null hypothesis. Another one, 
I also discussed this in my previous lesson, how did I decide to use t-test and how did I compute for its value. Since this is t-test, let us recall our t-table. This is less than, so this is one tail at 0 0.05. One tail at 0 0.05. So here, the sample is 15. 15 minus 1 is 14. That would be our degrees of freedom. So the critical value is 1.761. Let us sketch the graph. Let us locate the critical value. Remember that this is left tail test since this is less than. So negative 1.761 is somewhere here. Let us label it and let us shade the tail to the right of it. And that is our rejection region. While to the right of the critical value is the non-rejection region. Let us locate our computed T value negative 1.383. If this is negative 1.7, then to the right of it lies negative 1.383. Decision, since the computed T value of negative 1.383 lies within the non-rejection region, hence we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Let us do extra challenge. Decide whether to reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis and state your interpretation. A researcher believes that the pandemic caused increase in weights of teenagers in your barangay. Refer to the data gathered below. Null hypothesis, mu is equal to 50. Alternative hypothesis, mu is greater than 50 because the researcher believes the pandemic caused increase. So we use greater than. Sample mean is equal to 53, sample standard deviation is 7, sample size is 40, and the level of significance is 0 0.10. Although we do not have the population standard deviation, but we have sample standard deviation instead, but our sample size is greater than 30, therefore we are going to use Z-test. Let us recall the formula for Z-test, that would be sample mean minus population mean all over sigma divided by the square root of n. Let us substitute our values here. Sample mean is 53. Population mean is 50. We do not have sigma, so we're going to use sample standard deviation instead, and that is 7. And our n is 40. Encoding this to your calculator, it will give you an answer of 2.711 rounded off to the nearest thousands. Since this is Z-test, we're going to need the Z-critical values. This is greater than, so this is a right tail test at 0 0.10 level of significance. Right tailed, 0 0.10, so the critical value is 1.28. Let us sketch our curve. Locate 1.28, that would be somewhere here. Let us label that. And the tail to the right of it is our rejection region. Let us locate the computed Z value 2.711 and that is on the right of the critical value, maybe somewhere here, 2.711. So our decision is to reject the null hypothesis because the computed Z value lies within the rejection region. Now for the interpretation, listen closely to this. We reject the null hypothesis because we have sufficient evidence to do so. And by rejecting the null hypothesis, you are supporting the alternative hypothesis. Again, alternative hypothesis is what you hope or believe to be true. And the researcher believes that the pandemic caused increase in weights of teenagers. So in words, this would be there is sufficient evidence, because you reject, to support the claim that the pandemic caused increase in weights of the teenagers. That is how we do our interpretation. First, you tell why did you reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject. You reject if you have sufficient evidence. And when you reject the null hypothesis, you support the alternative hypothesis. We will have more of this in our next lesson. 
For the summary, again, here is the general rule in rejecting the null hypothesis. Now, it is time to check your understanding. Pause this video for more time. Let us answer. We have here null hypothesis mu is equal to 85. Alternative hypothesis mu is not equal to 85. The sample mean is 88, the sample size is 20, and the sample standard deviation is 8. Use alpha is equal to 0 0.10. First thing to do is to express this into their proper notations. Sample mean, that would be x bar, is equal to 8 to 8. Sample size, that would be n, equal to 20. Sample standard deviation, that would be small letter s, equal to 8. And then we have alpha is 0 0.10. Let us analyze. We have here a sample less than 30 and we have sample is standard deviation. So this means we're going to use t-test. Let us recall the formula for t-test. Sample mean minus population mean all over sample standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. Let us substitute our values here. Let us compute this and this will give us 1.677, rounded off to the nearest thousands. Since this is t-test, we're going to need our t-table. This is not equal to, so it means it is a two-tailed test at level of significance 0 0.10. So two-tailed test, level of significance 0 0.10, so this column. Our sample is 20, 20 minus 1 is 19, that would be our degrees of freedom. So the critical value is 1.729. Let us graph, let us locate 1.729. Remember that this is a two-tailed test, so we have one positive 1.729 and one negative 1.729. The tails of the curve are the rejection region. Let us locate 1.677 and that is to the left of 1.729, maybe somewhere here. And it lies on the non-rejection region. So our decision would be the computed t-value of 1.677 lies within non-rejection region, hence we fail to reject the null hypothesis gets our next lesson is solving problems involving test of hypothesis on population mean